I want to do is go to John. What I want to do is, uh, so read that one more time for me, bro. All right. This is, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. In my speech, in my pre preaching, was not with enticing, like enticing words of man's wisdom, mm -hmm. but in demonstration, enticing words of man's wisdom is what that fake, that fake Christianity and that Islam and Buddha, Buddhism and uh, Hinduism, you know, and all that other uh, uh, confusion. Those are enticing words of man wisdom, but. Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah word is a demonstration of power. Okay? Which is to what? Uplift your spirit. Okay? And let you know who you are according to the Bible. Go ahead. But in demonstration of the spirit and power. See? So, what I want now. Yes, morning. Okay, go ahead, bring it out. It's, uh, verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of the Most High. See? See what you got? So, is the word power? Yes. If you don't got it, and you got a famine on the word, what are you? Weak. Done. Sorrow of mind. Done. See? You got a faint spirit on you. So you see what you got? So what I want is... So what I want is John 7 and uh, 35. All right, this is John 7. This is John chapter 7, verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will we go? Whither will he go? That we shall not find him. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? See? So he said, so they, so these are the, the, uh, the Jews, the Israelites, among, uh, discussing amongst themselves, saying, Whether will he go to the dispersed amongst the Gentiles to teach the Gentiles? So they actually knew that it was Israelites, okay, that wasn't keeping the customs of the nation and was was in a Gentile state of mind scattered amongst the Gentiles. Now, we're going to look up that word dispersed right there. So they knew. The Israelites back then knew, okay. The leaders of Israel back then knew that you had Israelites scattered amongst some other nations that was taking on the cousin of the other nation in the Gentile state of mind, okay? They knew because it was prophecy. Like going back to like I was saying, I was using Deuteronomy uh, 28 and verse 64 as the foundation. See? Yeah. It's acting funny. I need to pull it up, bro. So, for some reason, some reason the shit done switched over to three G. Uh, it's acting funny. That's safe, man. But you know, man, that's that's part of that's part of uh, you know, being out here teaching. You having. You know what I'm saying? Difficulties with electronics. You got people come up and disturb you. Say things that really don't make sense to try to throw off the spirit. You know. So. Okay. Y'all bear with us. Strong's G, 1290. Strong's G, 1290. Diaspora. Diaspora. 
de Aspara. And it's a, a scattering disper dispersion. Yep. Of Israelite of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations. Alright. So show them that. So they was asking well, they was talking amongst themselves, where, where is he going to go? Is he going to go to the dispersed Israelites amongst these other nations that's in the Gentile state of mind and teach them? Go ahead. So you see? So the Israelites that was back there that knew that was Israelites knew that it was Israelites scattered amongst these other nations in a Gentile state of mind that wasn't keeping the statute of commandments. They knew. That's why they were saying what they were saying right there amongst themselves, man. See that? So read that again. And we're going to look up that word Gentile right there too. All right. So back in John chapter 7 verse 35. Then said the Jews amongst themselves, Whither will he go? That, that we shall not find him. Question. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? See? So that's what they were saying amongst themselves. Okay. And we're going to look up the word Gentile. Right there. It should say Helen. Right? That's what it should say. So, make sure you bring it out. So. Uh, Strong's G 1672 Strong's G 1672 Helene 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 uh, In a wider sense the name embraced all nations See that's where people get lost at Okay that's where people get lost at when they say that right there but when you look at that dispersed, it's telling you what it is. But when you look up the word Gentile right there, and it goes into Helen, it says, it kind of like throws you off if you're not learned. So read it again. The definition. All right, it says, in a wider sense, the name embraced all nations, not Jews, that made the language, custom, and learning of the Greeks their own. See, but it's she's saying not the Jews. It's telling you right there that it's saying that the Jews did not make uh, their custom uh, the Greek language. That's what they're telling you. For in other words, the Jews never became. Uh, took on the customs of the other nations. That's basically what that's saying right there. Where the Jews never took on the customs of the other nations. But when you read Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 64 and 5, it tells you that they was going to be worshiping uh, idols, wood and stone. So if you do that, that means you're taking on the customs of the other nations. See? So that's where that stumbling block comes in there, to where it confuses you. Now when you deal with the, now when you go into the, now I'm saying it for a reason, okay? For you people who like to research, and this is why I'm saying it, okay? When you research the Hasmonean Empire, it will tell you, when you search it out in Google, I ain't even talking about going to the to the to the Maccabees. 
first Maccabees and second Maccabees. I'm just talking about regular Google. If you search out regular Google, the Hasmonean Empire, and you search that out, it will tell you that the Israelites, the Jews, took on the customs of the Greeks. It will tell you that. So the blue letter is going off right there when it's saying uh, not the Jews didn't take on the customs of other nations' languages and uh, it's saying, it's going off when it's saying that the Jews did not take on the, the customs or the language of the Greeks. It's going off, man. Because for one reason, Paul could speak Greek. And he was an Israelite. So you mean to tell me the scriptures is lying about Paul speaking Greek? He was an Israelite. So that's a cut right there. So it's saying the Jews did not take on the language of the Greeks, but Paul could speak Greek. See that? Read that again, bro. All right, this is uh, Strong's G, 1672. Strong's G, 1672. Ellie. Ellie. And it says, in a wider sense, the name embraced all nations, not Jews, that made the language, custom, and learning of the Greek their own. So that's a lot. Okay? Now, is there anything else up in there you can grab? Uh, because I want to bring it all out to, yeah, to crush, you know, the stumbling block. Okay. It says, the primary reference is to a difference of religion and worship. Okay, so here it is. What I want to grab. Let me see if I can grab something up out of here. Alright, what I want you to do, what I want you to do is hold that and I want you to go hold what you got right there and I want you to go to John 19 and 19. But we're going to go back to that. Okay, dealing with that uh, blue letter definition. When you look up the word Gentiles in uh, John 7 and uh, 35. So I want to go back to that. Alright, this is John chapter 19. Verse 19. Yep. A pilot and pilot wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was Yahawashai of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Go ahead. Verse 20. This title then read many of the Jews. It said, This title read many of the Jews. Go ahead. For the place where Yahawashai was crucified was night to the city and it was written in the Hebrew and Greek uh -oh. and Latin. So you had Israelites, the Jews who could speak Greek but in the blue letter it said that they didn't. Right. You see? So that goes to show you that the blue letter goes off. You just got to know when it goes off. Okay? So read that one more time for him, bro, and then we're going to jump back to John 7 and 35. All right, this is John chapter 19, verse 19. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was Yahawashai of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Verse 20, the title then read many of the Jews for the place where Yahawashai was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in the Hebrew and Greek and Latin. So you see that? So the Israelites could what? Speak Greek. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is uh
this is uh this is in the Zandavin, Zandavin Compact Bible Dictionary. And I'm gonna read what's in here. Okay. But what I want you to do is go back to that blue letter again and read what it says again in the blue letter before I read this, what's in the Zandavin Compact Bible Dictionary. So we gave you we mentioned, we mentioned, I mentioned about Paul could speak Greek, and then I went to John 19 and 19, showing you that the Israelites could speak Greek. Okay? Then I'm, I, and earlier I mentioned about what? The Hasmonean Empire. So if you search that out, you will find out that, if you do a Google search on that, you will find out that the Israelites uh, took on the customs of the Greeks. And was speaking that language because when you read uh, in the New Testament, John 19 and 19, they were speaking Greek because it was written in Greek. So in order to read it, you got to be able to speak it. Bottom line, and that's why the New Testament was written in Greek because you had a lot of Israelites speaking Greek. Just like right now in the states certain areas that you go to they'll have a they'll have a sign and they'll put it in English and then they'll put it in Spanish. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So the people who speak English and Spanish, they can read it. Uh, the See? People that speak English that don't speak Spanish, but the people that speak Spanish that don't speak English. Yeah man. So it's a reason. But that goes that goes to show you how the blue letter goes off man and be lying. But you gotta know when it's going off. So we're gonna read what it says in the blue letter again. We're gonna, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the meaning, the, the word, the the the, uh, the letter, meaning the number. It's uh, and this is in John 7 and 35. Okay, go ahead. It's a Strong's G 1672. Just go ahead and read what he's saying. He Helen. No. 1672. Okay. Helen. And it says, in a wider sense, the name embrace, embraces all nations, not Jews, that made the language, customs, and learning of the Greek their own. See? I didn't try to throw that in there. And somebody who reading it. Yeah, it's like, oh, they're talking about so other nations can be saved right. now. But they don't understand that the blue letter going off. They don't understand that you got to have an understanding and faith in the in the foundation in your Hawashim Shai in order to navigate through that blue letter, man. Right? And navigate through history and understand what's truly going on, man. You just can't jump into this thing and think you got it. No, you have to be called, man. You have to be taught, man. You know? So, that's what they're saying in the blue letter. There's some more on it. The primary reference is to a difference of religion and worship. That's all that's all that's in there. Alright. Now I'm, now we gave you an example. Now I'm gonna read. I mean, that's, that's it on, on that particular thing, but it's got that entire. Well you can read that. You can read that too. There's another definition that's in there. Okay. I just wanna get out all what's in there. Okay. Just in case somebody run across it. Come, come, come. I just wanna get it all out so I can cut it. Okay. You it's, know? It says uh it says, a Greek either by nationality, whether a native native of the mainland or of the Greek islands or colonies. See? So they would say, and then the real Greeks, the real Greeks are the Japhetic people. Okay? Hawaiian Samoans and the Tonganese. Because when you deal with the word Greek, they go back to Javan, which is one of the Japhet descendants. But what it is is Esau dealing with Alexander them, and when you're reading the Josephus, it tells you that they uh, took over, the Edomites took over lands and started naming themselves 
after the people of their land and saying they were the one who did all those things and came up with all those things. When you're reading the Josephus. But Esau, what he done was took uh, the name of the Greek and put it on himself like they do everything else. Right, right. Like you got you got Brad Pitt, I say, come up with, the, uh, he's in the movie, The Last Mexican. Got it, got it. Okay? And you got uh, 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 Tom Cruise with the with the movie, The Last Samurai. Got it. You see? Uh, you got a movie called uh, The Prince of Persia, which them, uh, Elam, them got mad at America for making movies like that. They were number Edomites in them. And then you got another, you got another movie that came out, which is uh, what is it called? Uh, the it was a movie dealing with Egypt, the gods of Egypt. There was a movie came out dealing with the gods of Egypt, and there were number Edomites in there. The main character was Edomites. Okay, crazy. It was a time. It was a time during the time of Ptolemy. Ptolemy them that the Edomites is down in the Egypt, but the original Egyptians are dark-skinned people. The Watusis, the Zulus, and the Suanese, those are the real Egyptians. But the reason why I'm naming these things and mentioning these movies to show you that Esau takes other people's nationalities and other people's heritage and place it on himself and say he was the one. It's like we were talking about earlier, about we were talking about the uh, so-called uh, cowboys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You would think, but when you do actually research on it, the the real you know cowboys with the you know with the so uh, Iscarites, they would call themselves vaqueros. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So the real cowboys go back to what? Jake. Okay. See, but Esau with high history, and since he in authority, and since Jake been in slavery, and people look down on Jake as if they ain't nothing. Okay, and ain't nobody gonna listen to no poor man. So since Esau's in power, whatever history he come up with and whatever he put in this movie, people believe it. And it's, and it's, it's, it's amazing, uh, if I may say, uh, I got a 